My name is John Greeno. I'm a professor and researcher at the University of British Columbia, Okanagan. And uh, uh, my uh, specialty is uh, natural chemistry or geochemistry uh, of, uh, of rocks. A number of people uh, uh, influenced me and uh, got me interested in science. Uh, my mother was uh, uh, a uh, elementary and junior high school uh, math and science teacher, and and she was always encouraging me to uh, uh, encouraging an interest in science. Uh, my father was a carpenter, but uh, he liked uh, fixing all kinds of things, from uh, televisions to radios to uh, uh, the family car. I had an uncle who uh, uh, operated a coal mine in Cape Britain, Nova Scotia, uh, only mine that I know of that ever made any money in Atlantic Canada, well, only coal mine uh, that ever made any money in Atlantic Canada. And, uh, and uh, I had a grandfather who was a fisherman, and uh, I found a fossil beside his boat when I was uh, somewhere around five years of age and uh, he had walked over those rocks all of his life and I guess the fossils he never saw them and here this little kid picked this thing up well he told people about that for days and uh, and that really encouraged an interest in uh, in earth science. What's around us that thing there. What is it? What's it made of? What's most of the outside of the earth made of? What is the single chemical compound that represents 60% of the outside of the earth? What are the rocks made of? They're made of plagioclase. 60% of the crust of the earth is plagioclase. It's basically a sodium, calcium, aluminum, silicon, oxygen compound. It silicates. Uh, the average person knows more about astrophysics than they do about their own planet. Uh, it's rather remarkable. And uh, it's a serious problem. I think it's a serious problem. We don't take our planet seriously. Well, as I was saying, my uh, research work is focused on high temperature rocks called basalts. They're the dominant rocks uh, making up uh, the uh, surface of the earth. An ex exciting uh, idea that I've been working on for uh, two decades is that uh, is how the chemical variation we see in basalts, especially in the ocean basins, how it came about and what it can tell us about uh, the uh, uh, about the evolution of Earth. And uh, back in the 60s, you'll recall uh, that this idea of plate tectonics developed and uh, that uh, the interior of the Earth convex and on the surface we have plates and that convection inside the Earth drives these plates. They collide with one another. We get mountain belts, etc. And so we've thought that a lot of the variation that occurs uh, that we see in basalts is related to that process of ocean floor and its sediments, its basalts, et cetera, being uh, returned to the interior of the earth. Nevertheless, there's some problems with it. Various people have uh, found that there are rare rocks on these ocean islands like Hawaii uh, that seem to be extremely old. There are radiometric clocks in those rocks that should have stopped ticking in the interior of the earth if it's at 1300 degrees Celsius. The clock get des gets destroyed at high temperatures. Well, uh, we know that th these, some of these rocks actually do preserve dates and uh, 
that's enigmatic. It appears that these materials that we have ascribed to rocks being subducted over Earth history, uh, that may not be the case. These uh, variations in basalts uh, in the ocean basin seem to be uh, related to bits and pieces of material that was below the continents being scraped off and uh, now occurring in the ocean basins. And that, that is a fundamental change in our view of how the planet actually works. It's a very rare researcher who can get by with 65 hour weeks. Some people work over 100 hours a week. That means that you've got to be able to survive for days on end on four hours or five hours of sleep. A lot of people cannot do that. Some people can't do that. That was one of my gifts. I could be in the bag, but I could still function. <laughs> And I worked hard. I'm old now. I can't work that hard any longer, but it's been a great, you know, it's been a great honor and privilege uh, to be able to get up in the morning and think and examine and question all day long. It's my job. We all have gifts and we all have our liabilities. The idea is to know what you're good at, what you can't do at all, and try to, uh, try to, for the things that you can do but you're not great at, if you need them to support the things you are good at, then you've got to work hard at them. Uh, and I have all kinds of uh, things that I don't understand about my mind. Um, I didn't, I couldn't learn my birthday, and I didn't know my birthday until I was in grade six. Can't remember dates. Don't know city, don't know street names for any t city or town I ever lived in my life. Can't remember people's names. Couldn't possibly remember people's names. There are things that I, my brain just doesn't do. But somehow or another, I can read an article in a science journal and there'll be something in there that didn't quite fit, didn't quite work. And that point will stick in my brain because I go, oh, well, there's two or three other things I remember seeing. That was all kind of worked together, and um, somehow or another, um, don't ever let somebody tell you that uh, just because you're not some genius at one thing uh, doesn't mean that you could make uh, important contributions uh, to humanity.